Okay, today we're going to look as to how you obtain the state space uh, form from a free body diagram, just starting with the differential equations and then going to the state space form. So let's take a look at this uh, in here. We'll just set up a simple example for this uh, and see. We're going to start from scratch, okay? So uh, why don't we start then with a simple example that we use, and then you can do the example for the free body diagram that you have. So this is the example like this. And so the, the issue here doesn't become really obtaining the equations because you already know how to do that. But the issue becomes how do you actually um, um, do the, um, the state space form and all that stuff. So here we have this force. Uh, I think we put it like this, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And you have the mass, and you have K, and you have V. Yeah, but then then we will have four four equations, and that is uh, the we could try to do that. But I thought that it would be best to uh, to do this simple one first, so that you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, let's let's try this first, and then we can attempt to do the other one because I think. If you don't understand one with two, you're not gonna follow one with four. So I feel better if we if we try this. Um, so this is F, free body diagram. This part that I'm doing, you don't need any coaching. I am gonna tell you where where you need a little uh, help right here. So this is K times X and this is B times X, star, right? Uh, this is M. So in here, as we always say, F equals MA minus K times X minus B times X dot equals to MX double dot. So far, you don't need any help from me in doing this. Right? Um, what you need is, the question here is how do we obtain the state space form, right? Okay. Now what happens is that uh, we have to we have to realize that what we have in here. We have second order differential equations. Okay? And we have to stay, how do we obtain one? We need to transform the second order, second order equation into two first order equations. Okay, so if you have one second order equation produces two first order equations. If you have two second order equations, like in the lab, you are going to end up with four first order equations, okay? So I'm just trying to set you up with a very easy example first on how do we do this. So in here, we have a, you, you, in, or, in order to make this easy for you, what I would suggest is that you put the highest derivative like this, that x dot is equal to one over m 
times um, uh, I would say minus uh, k times x and then you have minus b over m x dot and then plus f over m I mean I am doing this deliberately because in order to transform this equation into two first order this form makes it easier I always try to make your life easy here so you need this form I would say two you could say we need something that says dy1 dt equals something and then you have something that says dy2 dt equals to something this is what we want okay so once we have it in this form putting in in matrix form is going to be easy and when you do it using bond graphs cam g gives you already this form and so you have saved all the steps that i'm doing right now but precisely i wanted you to go uh, through that so that you see how that is done okay so what we are going to do i would say that um, the first variable um, y sub 1 is going to be equals to x okay and that dy1 dt is going to be equal to uh, obviously uh, dx dt and we are going to call this y sub 2 so the first equation that you have is dy1 dt equals to y sub 2 this is your first equation I told you you need two so the the one is very easy to obtain the second one is going to be dy2 dt is going to be equal to um, the derivative of uh, uh, dy1 dt so if this is uh, uh, this is going to be uh, x double dot like this is this is going to be uh, this dy2 dt seen here if you differentiate this isn't it true that this is d is square y1 dt square which is the same thing as right written d square x dt square right and if this is true this is x2 double that see what i mean now what you you, you write next you say dy2 dt is equal to this x double dot see what you have in here you have it right there this is minus k over m what is x is y1 right y1 and then you have minus b over m and you have x dot right which is what is y sub 2 and then plus f over m like that and then now you have the second equation see this one so this equation that you have in here this one number two isn't it true from what we said before how, how is this form called can you please look at your notes or remember how, how is this form called this first order form it is called the Cauchy form so now how do we get um, so here we can put we obtain 
state space state space form from these two equations from these two equations yeah you obtain a state space form from these two equations um, in, in matrix form. So what we're going to do here is this. You're going to say, OK, I am going to put this into matrix form in such a way that the derivatives here, uh, let us switch, uh, uh, let's see, dy1 dt. And the other one that says dy2 dt. Remember one thing. You have to keep this in mind. What is the form that we want? I remember we just used it in green before. You have this form like this. is equal to the matrix A times x like this plus B times U. This is what we want. We want this form. So if you have it in here for this purpose, um, you're going to say, OK, look, this is going to be equal to some matrix. Some, some matrix like this. Uh, let me just do it right here so it's uh, clean. Um, let's just put this in here and say, OK, this matrix is going to be like this. I am going to take uh, like that. I'll make this vector here, where the vector here is going to be y1, and this is going to be y sub 2, plus in here we have this, and then we have this. So this is the, the, the input f. There's no other input. OK, look, this whole trick is to put this equations into matrix form in such a way that if you do the matrix multiplication, you'll get the equations. That's how it works. So this one in here, this y1 dt equals y2, that means that this is 0 because it has no, no y1 term. But this is a 1, see? And then on this side, there's no f. So this is a 0 here. Now this other one, the second one, y y2, what does it have a y1? This is going to be minus k over m. And then this this 2 is going to be minus b over m. And then this is going to be 1. OK, if anybody did not understand what I did, please raise your hand so that I can explain it again. Good. Why is it not 1 over m? Where? For Here? Uh, this one? Yeah. Oh no. You you're right. It's gotta be one over a because that is the coefficient of this. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. So explain again for the for the top uh, two. Like why did you get zero and one? Okay. Good. Good. All right. Let me put it this way. Um, this first row like that. I don't want to draw a line because then it would look funny. But look at that line like that as this equation, as this one. Yeah? Uh, is everybody is on the same page or not? You, um, didn't say anything about this. Uh, so that uh, my friend here didn't either. So. Sorry, uh, you got you gotta yell at me. All right, here, here. Everybody okay until we obtain these two equations, or not? Yeah. 